We are unable to respond to technical questions about the RFP during the time between the publication date and the completion of the RFP process. In all questions uh, concerning the RFP, the process or programmatic issues must be submitted in writing by email to listosgrants at caloes.ca.gov. So we're going to go ahead and go over the first presentation, um, which will be the request for proposal, an overview of that, and then the second half of the presentation will be a training on the forms. So the first part I, will be Katie Hardaway. So go ahead and take it away, Katie. Hi, thank you, Cindy, and thank you everybody for attending today. As she said, I will be going over the request proposal for the overview training. Let's get started. So the agenda today is the Leaster's Grant Unit contact information, the program overview, the purpose of the grant, the eligibility criteria, funding for the LI program, programmatic components, reporting requirements, proposal rating, and the checklist. Um, you're going to notice that I'm going to go through this slide set and read most of everything. It's just that I want to be able to tell you how you see it and uh, be able to um, uh, internalize that information. So please be patient, sorry. Listos Grant Unit, the contact information. Listos Grant Unit is responsible for the overall grant management of the Listos California Statewide Grant LS Program, the Listos California Target Grant LG Program, and the Listos California Tribal Grant LI Program, and Listos California CERT Program, LC Program. Questions concerning the RFP, the process, or the programmatic issues must be submitted in writing by email to listosgrants at caloes.ca.gov. CalOES staff cannot assist the applicant with any actual preparation of the proposal. CalOES can only respond to technical questions about the RFP during the period of time between the publication date and the completion of the RFP process. Program overview. In FY 2022-23, Budget Act included 25 million ongoing general fund appropriation to Cal OES. One million of that went to the Listos California Tribal Grant LI program via a competitive process. Applicants can apply this year for up to 200,000. Grant subaward performance period is between June 1, 2023 through December 31st, 2024. This is an important date, guys. Please make note of it. Submission deadline is Monday, March 27th, 2023 by 5 p.m. via email at leastosgrants.caloes.ca.gov. The purpose of the grant is for the LI program is to support federal recognition recognized tribes located in California that serve populations in areas at moderate to high risk for natural hazard. Tribal governments can work independently with their tribal governments or with local CBOs to provide disaster training and resources to vulnerable and diverse populations. The goal of this work is intended to increase their community's disaster preparedness, response, recovery, and mitigation capabilities. For definition, social vulnerability, the potential negative effects on communities caused by external stress on human health, such stresses include natural or human caused disasters or disease outbreaks. Reducing social vulnerability can decrease both human suffering and economic loss. Social vulnerable uh, populations. 
include those that have special needs such as, but not limited to, people without vehicles, people with disabilities, older adults, and people with limited English proficiency. Eligibility criteria for the proposal to be considered i.e. the reading and rated, applicants may be a federal recognized tribe with administrative offices located in California, have an unaltered grant subaward programmatic narrative and grant subaward budget narrative in accordance with the instructions on part two, section B of the RFP. Cal OES cannot accept alternate or modified forms without, without undermining its neutral competitive selection process and will not read pages more than the maximum allowed. One proposal must be emailed to listosgrants at caloes.ca.gov by 5 p.m. on Monday, March 27th, 2023. Proposals must be attached as one single PDF document and contain the forms outlined in part two of the RFP instructions. Emails should identify the name of the RFP in the subject line. An example would be LI RFP, My Brother's House Organization. Funding for the tribal grant. One million was available for the LI program for the grant subaward performance period. Applicants may apply for up to 200,000. Subrecipients may request in advance up to 25% of their awarded funds. There is no match required for the LI program. Subrecipients cannot subgrant to other CBOs that have been awarded Listers California Grant Program funds. Programmatic components. Managing the subgrant funds to local CBOs, LISTOS California grant program materials, communication requirements, training, establishing and implement a peer to peer engagement approach, identify gaps and proposed solutions, host a conversation to identify emergency preparedness and needs of the community for integration into the local emergency plans. Capture stories of impact. The subrecipient may subgrant funds to the local CBOs who will provide disaster training and resource to vulnerable and diverse populations and have the ability to serve as a physical sponsor for the selected local CBOs. Subrecipients cannot subgrant to other CBOs that have been awarded Listos California grant program funds. The number of the local CBOs selected should be informed by the regional picture of vulnerable populations the applicant intends to reach. Those local CBOs will engage the greatest possible number of vulnerable members in the applicant service area to reach the statewide objective of collecting more than 1 million Californians to culturally and linguistically competent support. The least just grant California grant program materials and communications required. The Listos California grant materials is required and will be provided by a Cal OES vendor. Further information will be provided once a vendor is selected. If the subrecipient chooses to produce their own materials with Listos California grant program funds, they must receive prior approval from Cal OES, including the Listos California logo. Subrecipient must respond within five days to the all Cal OES required 
programmatic requests. For training, the subrecipient must incorporate the materials and resources developed for the and provided by the Listos California Grant Program in any emergency preparedness, response, recovery, and mitigation training conducted with grant funding. The subrecipient must attend monthly Listos California instructional training offered by Cal OES or a Cal OES designated vendor during the first six months of the grant subaward performance period. The subrecipient must attend monthly training classes meetings to receive updates and resources throughout the grant subaward performance period. Establish and implement a peer to peer engagement approach. Tribes who represent and connect to the region's most diverse and vulnerable populations will create and implement a peer-to-peer -peer approach to engage and educate the community that reflects the needs of the target population. Each tribe must organize their community to establish a tailored approach, which will ensure their community, one, is knowledgeable about what to do during a disaster and consider engaging community partners such as the faith-based community schools and community centers. Two, has emergency preparedness materials that can access information they need before a disaster hits. Three, is clear on the steps to take to increase their community's disaster preparedness, response, recovery, and mitigation capabilities and keep themselves, their families, and their communities safe. Four, share final approach and results with the Cal OES Least Just California support team. Identify the gaps and the purpose solution. The subrecipient must identify gaps raised by the community input in the peer-to-peer -peer engagement and organizing process and propose solutions to strengthen local county emergency plans. Share the recommendations on identified gaps and solutions with the Cal OES Least Just California Program Support Team. Host a conversation to identify emergency preparedness needs. A subrecipient must host a conversation to identify disaster preparedness, response, recovery, and mitigation needs of the community for integration into the tribal emergency plans as a joint effort with the local leaders across sectors, including tribal offices of emergency management. Share outcomes of the conversation with the Cal OES Listos California support team. Capture the stories of impact. The subrecipient must capture stories of impact highlighted in the outcomes and the results of the tribal strategies and connections made as part of it, this effort and they illustrate the purpose and intent of the LI program and provide the stories to Cal OES, least just California support team. These stories may be submitted in writing articles, written articles, videos, and photos. Please ensure that formal permission is granted for all stories. Reporting requirement. These are five progress reports required for the program. See the chart below for the reported period and due dates. Notice that June 1st, 2023 through September 30th, 2023 is due with the 30 day grace period on October 31st, 2023. I recommend that you do it at the first of the month simply because these things can get forgotten easily. And then we have to send out from the uh, Listos team reminders. In order to avoid that, please do it by the first part of October. Engagement, require, engagement report. 
The recipients are required to submit data directly through an online database immediately after an engagement activity or training commences or no later than the end of each month. Engagement reports are based upon direct public engagement activities. To determine what constitutes an engagement, refer to the primary guidance for defining and tracking engagements, the link listed in the request for proposal. The link will direct you to the document that outlines what is considered an engagement. Examples would be events, outreach efforts, or demonstrations. Best to view the link to make sure what qualifies. And here we've gone ahead and added one of these links and what it looks like in order to be able to track and look into the engagement. Please take the time to go into the RFP, select the link, and look at the information on what is considered an engagement. Proposal rating sheet. This is a competitive grant process, meaning that your applications will be ranked in comparison to all other applications received. Each of the above categories contain questions assigned a point value. The point scale is divided into five columns. First one is absent. The response does not address the specific question or a response that was not provided. Unsatisfactory. The response does not completely address the question. The information presented does not provide a good understanding of the applicant's intent. Satisfactory. The response addresses the question and provides a good understanding of the applicant's intent. The response adequately supports the proposal and the intent of the program, above average. The response is above average and provides a clear and detailed understanding of the applicant's intent. The response presents a persuasive argument that supports the proposal and the intent of the program. And then there's my favorite. Excellent. The response is outstanding with clear, detailed, and relevant information. The response presents a compelling argument and supports suppo the proposal and the intent of the program. Here are the forms that will be required to fill into that one PDF form. You'll go into these links in the RFP. It'll bring up the different forms, fill them out, and put them into the single PDF when you send it into the Listos grants at caloes.ca.gov. Recommendation for the, uh, the award. The final funding decisions are made by the director of Cal OES. Funding decisions are based on the following. The ranked score of the proposal, consideration of priorities and geographical distribution specific to this RFP, prior negative administrative and programmatic performance, if applicable. Once the decision has been made, the applicant will be notified in writing. Those not selected will receive a denial letter and information on the appeal process. Proposal sub submission. The proposal package must be received electronically no later than 5 p.m. on Monday, March 27, 2023 to listosgrants at Notice how the lettering is getting bigger on the date? Please write it down. Questions concerning the RFP, the process, or the programmatic issues must be submitted 
in writing by email to Lisa's grant at caloes at dot ca dot gov. All Cal OES staff cannot assist the applicant with the actual preparation of their proposal. Cal OES can only respond to technical questions about the RFP during the period of time between the publication date and completion of the RFP process. This concludes Listos California grant pro program for the RFP training. William, take it away. Thanks, Kitty. Um, hi, my name is William Chan. I'm the uh, program specialist with Le the Listos Grants Unit. Today, we're going to give a presentation on the grant subboard uh, proposal process. Today, we're going to provide uh, guidance on the components that are required of a proposal, and we are going to review those forms that we referenced just a moment ago and familiarize you with some uh, tools that are available. The process of submitting a proposal begins with a request for a proposal being released. This is our competitive process. Within the request for a proposal, you will find fund source information, the background of the program, requirements, and expected deliverables, and instructions on how to apply. So where do you find a request for a proposal? You can be found on the Cal OES website at caloes.ca.gov. And on the upper right corner, you will click on initiatives. And from the drop and from the uh, drop down menu selection, you would select search for grants. Once you're on the search for grants landing page, there are a couple of ways to uh, search. You can find at least those California RFPs by scrolling down on this page, or you can use the search box. I like to use the search box when I know which uh, request for proposal I'm looking for. You can type the name of the program in the box, or if you know the two letter program acronym, you can type that in instead. Although we are talking about a request for a proposal, I'd like to draw your attention to the mailing list. When the Cal OES releases a request for proposal, our competitive process for funding, we send an email notification to anyone who has signed up for our mailing list. Please know the only time you will send an email is when we release a new request for a proposal sending a solicitation to fill a position for one of our uh, advisory bodies, or when we post a public meeting notice. If you're not signed up already, we strongly encourage you to do so so that you can receive these important notices. Cal OES released the Listos California Tribal Grants Program request for proposal on February 8th, 2023, and applicants have approximately seven weeks to put the proposal packets together from that date. Uh, once complete, applicants will need to email a copy of the proposal packet to the Listos Grants Unit at listosgrants at caloes.ca.gov. Let's talk about the request for proposal or RFP itself. The RFP has three parts. Part one is what you have to do. It explains the Public Records Act, submission deadlines, eligibility, grant subboard performance period, funding, and programmatic requirements. Part two refers to policies or administrative requirements and includes references to the subrecipient handbook, components that are required with your proposal, policies concerning the budget, administrative requirements, and required or additional forms that may apply towards your proposal. Part three is a checklist that includes a list of the documents that are required with your proposal and links to the most current forms. This is an example of what the checklist looks like. It includes all the required components and links to each form. Under the additional form section, these forms may or may not be required depending on what you have in your budget. For example, if you do not have out of state travel, you will not need to include this form with your proposal. There are eight forms that are required with every request for a proposal, regardless of the program type. Please note that most programs will require additional forms, so read your request for proposal thoroughly. In these next slides, we're going to tell you about some of the more common mistakes that we find with these eight forms so that you know what we are looking for when we review your proposal. 
You can find these forms at the very end of the RFP in the checklist section with a hyperlink to each form. But first, here are a few uh, helpful reminders. Uh, number one, read the entire request for a proposal to understand what is required for the program. Number two, please note that all forms have instructions. So if you have questions about a form, look at the instructions first and then email lisosgrants at caloes.ca.gov for help. Use current forms. Cal OES updates our forms often. If you're using one of our forms that you've saved on, on your desktop, it's possible that it may have been outdated and you'll be asked to redo the form, which may delay the processing of your award if selected. Okay, let's start with the grant sub award face sheet. The instructions are on the left and the most recent version of the face sheet is on the right. A few of the most common mistakes we find on the grant sub award face sheet include the last four digits of the zip code are often missing. Please be sure to go to the US Postal Service website to look up your plus four and include that on your face sheet. Um, for disaster slash program title, this needs to match the name of the program you're applying for. This could be found in the request for a proposal. For example, if you're applying to the Least Those California Travel Grants Ally Program, then write Least Those California Travel Grants Ally Program on line five. Next, indirect cost rates and federally approved ICR. This is where you will indicate whether you're using the 10% de minimis rate or your agency's federally approved indirect cost rate agreements. A copy of the approved ICR negotiating agreements must be enclosed in your application if you are using a federally approved ICR. If you will not be claiming indirect costs under this award, type in NA. Okay, this is the uh, table that appears on the face sheets. We've zoomed in so that it's easier to see. This is where your funding information will go, and you can find all this information in your request for proposal. Please note that the grant year and fund source are now drop down boxes. Columns A and G can be typed in and will automatically total for you. Uh, in your request for proposal in part one, section F, funding information, you will find the information needed to correctly fill out the face sheet. This is an example of a grant sub award number. There is no need to fill in the sub award line area on the forms requesting it. The sub award number is given once an applicant has been awarded grant funds. This is the grant sub board contact information form. The instructions are on the left and the most recent version of the form is on the right. There's a list of things to keep in mind. Remember to use the most updated forms from our website. Don't forget to write the entire nine, digit, nine sorry. Don't forget to write the entire nine digit zip code number. Do not use white out to fix any corrections. On lines one and two, Make sure the number one grant sub award director and the number two financial officer are different. They cannot be the same person. On lines two and five, make sure the number two financial officer and the number five executive director are different. They cannot be the same person. And the number seven chairperson also cannot be listed again in any of the other positions, numbers one through six. Leave the grant sub board number section blank. This will be filled in for you if you are awarded. And lastly, please make sure the official designated the official designated by the governing board on line six is the person who signed the grant sub award face sheet. This is the signature authorization form. The instructions are on the left. And the most recent version of the form is on the right. When we review the signature authorization form, we compare it to the contact information form to ensure the grant sub board director and financial officer are the same authorized personnel. You can list alternate individuals that have authority to sign on the, on the uh, grant sub board director and financial officer's behalf. Just like the grant sub board director and financial officer cannot be the same person, you cannot have one person be an authorized signer on both sides of this form. 
it is best to have at least one authorized signer for each position. If someone is unavailable and you need to request funds or make a modification, it's easy to do so when you have a different authorized signers for each position. If not, there's nothing you can do until they return. If you want to change authorized signers, you must submit a grant subaward modification to Cal OES as soon as possible because it takes approximately two weeks to process. So it is important to make a modification request immediately when the change has been made internally in your organization. This is the current list of certification assurance of compliance documents we have. A common mistake is signing and submitting the wrong one. We must receive the one that's tied to the fund source of your program. The checklist and part three of the request for proposal will tell you exactly which one is needed. Another mistake is using an old version of a document. The way to ensure you have the current version is by downloading it from a website. Again, the checklist will have the link for the correct and current version. Please be sure you're reading this document in full so you know what the requirements are because when you sign this, you certify that you are compliant. Uh, the red arrows are some areas I want to bring to your attention. So number one, subrecipient is the name of your agency. Please have this match what is written on the face sheet. Number two, pointing out line one, the applicant should complete the Cal OES program name and the grant subaward performance period. The grant subaward number should be left blank. Your program specialist will fold this in for you. Number three, Ensure appropriate signers have signed the documents. This will be the official designee by the governing board. Number four, for federally recognized tribes and community-based organizations, it must be the governing board chair that signs this section. The budget is normally the next document in your proposal. Forms 2-106B grant subboard budget pages single fund source. The Cal OES has three budget categories. Category A is uh, personnel, category B is operating expenses, and category C is equipment. All three categories must be submitted with their application, whether or not you have items in that category. For example, if you do not have equipment, you can write none requested in that category. All three categories must be included in your application packet. The budget spreadsheet template will automatically add the columns on each tab and please show the equation on each line item as to how you got the total. The personnel category is where you'll want to put uh, salaries, benefits, overtime for people you employ at your agency. This is also where you will put your volunteer hours. The operating category is the meat and potatoes of your program. This is where you'll want to put just about everything else, including rent, travel, training, office supplies, etc. The equipment category is where you'll put non-expendable property having a useful life of more than one year and a cost of $5,000 or more per unit. So just to be clear, if you're buying six laptops at the cost of $1,000 each for a total of $6,000, you would put those laptops in the operating expense category, not in the equipment because the per unit price of the laptops is less than $5,000. Now let's talk about the information we need to see on the budget pages. The gold bubbles you'll see on the next few slides contain the elements that need to be included in each calculation for each line item. In this example, we have a program advocate position that's making $4,000 per month. Please note that the salary cost can be shown as an hourly rate, a monthly salary, or an annual salary. Then we want to see the duration. In this example, the program advocate will be paid for 12 months, which probably matches the length of the performance period. And then we want to see the full-time equivalent for the position. In this example, the program advocate will work 50% of the time on this program. Then finally, you will want to include a brief description of the line item and explain how it furthers the goals and, and objectives of the program. For the benefit calculation, you will need to include the benefit rates. In this example, the rate is 22%, multiplied by the total salaries of all employees in the budget that is, that is receiving uh, benefits. In this example, it's $200,000. And finally, you want to include a brief description of what benefits are included.
Unless you're paying the volunteers a salary, you should have it in the operating section. Volunteers are also captured in budget category A. Uh, the first elements needed is the rate that you have valued your volunteers at. Please know that this rate cannot exceed what it costs your agency to have a staff person doing the same job, and that you can include both salary and benefits when calculating the volunteer rate. In this example, the value of volunteers is $12 per hour, multiplied by the number of hours to be charged to the grants. In this example, 1,200 hours, and then include a description of activities the volunteers will be doing. Now we're going to show you a few operating expense examples. Operating uh, volunteers that, that are being charged for the following uh, per diem, gas, and mileage should be titled as such, as shown on the slide. Title as volunteer, uh, title of what they are being charged for. In this example, they are charging to per diem, and the name, number of training they are attending. Again, the elements in the gold bubbles uh, need to be included in each calculation for each line item. For this example, we have postage. The amount for postage is $250 per month multiplied by the duration. In this example, it's 12 months, which probably matches the length of the performance period multiplied by how much of the postage will be charged to the grants. Rent is another very common operating expense uh, for rent. You will need to add up the full-time equivalents or FTEs in budget category A personnel. personnel. In this example, we have uh, 4.5 uh, FTEs. Then multiply the 4.5 FTEs by 125 square feet per FTE, which is what is allowed as per the subrecipient handbook. And then multiply that by the amount you pay for rent per square foot. Please note that $2 is the up to amount, and you should use your actual rates in your calculation. If your landlord charges you 65 cents per square foot, that's the, that's the rate you need to use. Uh, finally, you will multiply by the duration. In this example, it's 12 months. If you're claiming indirect costs under this award, please make sure you're calculating the total correctly. A common mistake is multiplying the total award amount by the indirect cost rates. That is not how you calculate the indirect costs. You, uh, you will first need to calculate your total direct costs. Uh, to do this, you add up any personnel salaries, wages, benefits, operational costs, and up to $25,000 of your second tier sub awards. But you do not include any distorting costs, such as equipment, rent, capital expenditures, and second tier sub awards beyond the first $25,000. In this example, after doing the calculation, they got $233,215. Once you figure out your total uh, direct costs, you simply multiply that by the ICR or the federally approved ICR. In this case, 10%. Please make sure the ICR matches what you entered in Section 7 of the face sheets, and that if you are claiming a federally approved ICR, you must include a copy of your approved ICR negotiating agreements in your application. Some final reminders about your budget. Please be sure you refer to the RFP to identify required and prohibited expenses and that you build your budget accordingly. Be sure to use whole dollar amounts only. Often when your budget is off by a dollar, it is due to rounding errors. So please be sure you're checking the amounts entered into your budget columns. Please include expenses in the correct category. And lastly, all budget line items require justification and calculation. A request for proposal requires a budget narrative, which allows the subrecipient to provide details about their budget. The budget narrative typically includes how the budget supports objectives and activities, the need for administrative costs, and the necessity for subcontracts. The most common mistake we see with a budget narrative is that sometimes they don't match what's on the budget pages. For example, let's say you submitted your proposal packet and during uh, our review, your specialist determines that several corrections are needed to your budget pages. You make those changes for your specialist, but now your budget narr narrative doesn't match. So please remember, every time your budget pages are updated, your budget narrative must be updated as well. They must match. Next is the programmatic narrative. 
where you provide details about how you will meet the objectives of the program. Please be sure you're reading your RFP and that your narrative and that your narrative addresses each of the questions from the RFP. We have often seen applicants use the same narrative that they used the previous year or even perhaps for a different grant that does not address any or all of the questions from the RFP. Next is the Grants Management Assessment Form per Title II CFR Section 200.332. Cal OES is required to evaluate the risks of non-compliance with, with federal statutes, regulations, grant terms, and conditions posed by each subrecipient of pass-through funding. This assessment is made in order to determine and provide an appropriate level of technical assistance, training, grant oversight to applicants for the award reference above. The questions are related to your organization's experience in the management of federally of federal grant awards. This questionnaire must be completed and returned with your grant proposal materials. For purposes of completing this questionnaire, uh, grant manager is the individual who has primary responsibility for day-to-day -day administration of the grants. Bookkeeper slash accounting staff means the individual who has responsibility for reviewing and determining expenditures to be charged to the grant award. And organization refers to the applicants applying for the award and or the governmental implementing agency as applicable. We just spent a significant amount of time talking about the eight required forms for every request for a proposal we release, but sometimes additional forms may apply. So please be sure to check part five of your request for a proposal to find out if additional forms may apply for your organization. Some final things to remember. Um, all forms have instructions. Use the forms on the website. Those will be the most current version. The checklist that comes with the request for a proposal will tell you which forms are required. Email Listos Grants at listosgrants at caloes.ca.gov if you have questions. We are here to help. And lastly, use checklist in part five of the request for a proposal. So if you guys have any additional questions, um, please email any of your questions to listosgrants at caloes.ca.gov. Dot ca dot gov. Uh, we have somebody staffing that inbox all day, every day, except for Saturday and Sunday. And um, so we are responding to those emails as soon as we receive them. If not, um, it'll be a 24 hour turnaround, but we are trying really hard to answer your questions right away. The only time that it would be a 24 hour turnaround is if we're researching something and we'll, we'll let you know that. So please email your questions to that email address. Um, otherwise, I look forward to seeing everyone's applications and good luck. And again, we are here to assist you on any technical um, processes on the RFP or the application. So please give us an email. And um, I guess that's it. So thanks for attending today. Goodbye, everyone.